This future teacher got arrested for a DUI, but only blew a .06, under the legal limit. How does this affect her future? Does she win her case? And what lessons can you learn in case you're in this situation? So, my girlfriend went out for a couple of drinks with her friend tonight. She didn't drink much, and she waited until she knew she was sober to drive home. Hold the phone. Those are the famous last words of almost every DUI defendant. I thought I was fine to drive. Be sure to designate a driver ahead of time who does not drink and stick to that plan. Then you'll never need me to defend you for a DUI. When the time came, she drove herself and her roommate home in her roommate's car. Well, was headed home. On her way, she noticed that the headlights were off and flipped them on a couple of blocks down the road. This is an extremely common reason people get stopped for DUI. Here in Fredericksburg, Virginia, where I practice, the police officers literally wait outside the bars downtown, waiting to see people driving away from the bar, forgetting to turn their headlights on. It's obviously dark at 2 a.m. when the bars close, but there's a lot of street lights. And so some people do forget temporarily to turn their headlights on. Bam! DUI stop. A minute or two later, she was pulled over by a police officer. She admitted to having a couple of drinks. This young lady obviously doesn't subscribe to this YouTube channel or else she'd know to not talk to the police. And then the officer asked her to get out of the vehicle. If you saw last week's video, you know what she should have said here. If the officer asks you to get out of the vehicle, you should say, no thank you, or simply don't act. If the officer orders you out of the vehicle, you must comply. This is when it gets interesting. The officer made her take her glasses off in the dark during a snowstorm to perform the sobriety tests. Sadly, this is likely legit, even though it seems super sketchy. The officers normally begin field sobriety tests with what's called the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, or the HGN. This is a test where you're supposed to follow a stimulus with your eyes without moving your head. Usually the stimulus is something like an ink pen or the officer's fingertip. The officer is looking for an involuntary twitching of your eye that you don't even realize is happening. The training manual, the actual procedures the officers are supposed to follow, actually instructs the officer to have the suspect remove glasses if they're wearing them. The training manual even says that it's not necessary for the suspect to see the stimulus clearly as long as they can see it well enough to follow it with their eyes. A Reddit commenter, perhaps a police officer himself, nails this point. Glasses need to be removed in the horizontal gaze nystagmus HGN test. Quote, follow my finger with your eyes. But even though glasses are removed for the horizontal gaze nystagmus test, they should be allowed to be worn for the remaining field sobriety tests, such as doing the nine step walk and turn or standing on one leg. Especially the nine step walk and turn, for example, you're walking and you need to be able to see where you're going. Remember that the officer doesn't make you refuse your eyeglasses. All of the physical tests on the side of the road are 100% voluntary. The officer may make it seem like an order. He may say, okay, we're gonna do some tests to make sure you're okay to drive, but you can simply say, no, thank you. And unfortunately, that's what this gentleman's girlfriend should have said is no. He then declared that she was drunk without having her blow to the test her BAC and arrested her on the spot and took her to jail. I assume that the OP means what we call a preliminary breath test or a portable breath test. Some states call it a preliminary alcohol screening. This is a roadside test that is one more tool in an officer's belt to determine if somebody should be arrested for DUI. This particular case is taking place in Wyoming, which probably does not require that the officer actually offer the handheld breath test in every case on the side of the road. Virginia, for example, only requires that the officer offer a preliminary breath test if it is available. A Redditor gives really bad advice on this issue. The PBT is not used to create probable cause. The SFSTs create cause. The PBT is only for confirmation. You are not required to be given or provide a PBT sample, unless Wyoming says otherwise, which I doubt. While this Redditor is correct that you're not normally required to blow into a PBT or preliminary breath test, there's only a very tiny handful of states that actually require it, such as Nebraska. This Redditor is extremely wrong that the PBT does not create cause to arrest you. Good officers are trained to only use the PBT as a confirmation of their conclusion whether the suspect is impaired or not impaired based on their physical tests that they've already done. However, legally speaking, the portable or preliminary breath test is in fact used to determine if the officer has probable cause to arrest you. Virginia law specifically says that if the PBT indicates the presence of alcohol, then the officer may arrest you for DUI. This is one more reason why you should always refuse the roadside breath test, at least in Virginia and most states. Then at the jail, she blew a .06. That's below the legal limit. We are in Wyoming. And the lady at the booking desk told her to get an attorney when she heard what her BAC was. The folks at r slash legal advice provide spot on insight on this issue. 
Driving below a .08 doesn't mean it's legal. .08 is just where it's illegal to drive, no matter how sober or intoxicated you are. You can be impaired and guilty of DUI below .08. Everything seems pretty standard, and yes, she needs an attorney. People mistakenly believe that they're 100% legal to drive as long as they're under the limit. False. This is one reason why it's a bad idea to carry around your own preliminary breath tests to test your blood alcohol as you're leaving the bar or restaurant. You could blow a .06 when you leave the bar and you could still be arrested for a DUI. I represent people in situations like this quite frequently. If you blow a .08 or higher, that is what we call a presumption that you are in fact under the influence of alcohol. If you blow a .05 or lower, that is a presumption that you're not under the influence of alcohol. However, the state or the Commonwealth can still argue based on other evidence that you still were under the influence, even though your blood alcohol was really low. And in both states, if you blow an 06 or an 07, that is neither a presumption either way. So both sides are going to try to argue based on other evidence and facts in the case that you were or were not under the influence. So under the limit does not mean you're innocent. My question is, does she have a decent chance to be ruled innocent in a court of law? We have no money and probably can't afford a good lawyer. I can barely afford her bail. She is on track to be a school teacher and blowing a .06 shouldn't deter her from pursuing her dream. Yes, any DUI case where you blow under a .08 can be quite defensible. The big caveat here is if you were in the state of Utah. In Utah, a .05 is considered enough to be under the influence for DUI. And if Mothers Against Drunk Driving gets their way, every state of the union is gonna be moving towards a .05 legal limit. Update, after reviewing the body cam footage, the prosecutor dismissed the case. I haven't seen the footage myself, but according to her lawyer, it was clear that she was not impaired. Victory! To learn exactly when you should refuse a police breathalyzer and in what states you can't, be sure to check out my next video. I'll see you over there. And remember, don't talk to the police.